Thanks for that. Thanks everyone for tuning in today. Uh, my name's Adam. I'll be having a chat to you about uh, the QCA's draft determination on retail electricity prices for regional Queensland in 2017-18. Now, just a, a quick note at the start of the workshop. Um, the QCA has an official spokesperson. That's our chair. Uh, his name is Professor Roy Green. Um, if you need any comments for the media or anything like that, um, the best your best bet is to give the QCA a call on that number and they can ar arrange a discussion with him. Uh, I'm not an official spokesman, the only official spokesperson is our chair. Now, just so everyone's on the same page, notified prices apply in regional Queensland and that is the Ergon distribution area. Uh, on the map here, you can see that this is the brown area. Uh, the, the, the prices we're discussing today do not apply in the Energex distribution area or in the essential energy distribution area. Now, the QCA sets prices under a legislative framework that's under the Electricity Act. Now, under the Electricity Act, they, we have to take uh, regard of three different things when we set prices. The first is the actual cost of supply for customers. We also have to consider the effect on competition of the prices that we set and any other matters that are required by the Minister's delegation. Now that's the same legislative framework that we've operated under in previous years, that hasn't really changed. The Minister's delegation this year is also consistent with previous years. We have to consider using an approach where we take the network cost or the N component of prices, which are the tariffs that Ergon uh, and Energex charge retailers to use the electricity network, and then add to those the retail costs. So they're the retail costs, which are, for example, the cost of purchasing energy from the electricity market, as well as operating uh, re general retail operating costs. In addition to that, to using that kind of approach, we have to consider maintaining transitional arrangements for transitional and obsolete tariffs. We'll go into a little bit more details about those later on. The final thing that the Minister's delegation requires us to consider is a very important policy called the Uniform Tariff Policy. Now, the aim of the Uniform Tariff Policy is that so that non-market customers, so customers on standing offers of the same class should pay no more for their electricity regardless of their geographic location across the state. Um, for residential and small business tariffs, there's an additional stipulation and that is that the prices that we set for small customers and residential, uh, small business and residential customers should broadly reflect the expected prices for customers on standing offers in South East Queensland. That's a, a fairly pivotal, uh, pivotal uh, stipulation, which we'll get into the significance of that a little bit later on. Now, the Uniform Tariff Policy, just as a, a bit of an illustration of how it works, regional Queens, the cost of supplying customers in regional Queensland is actually higher for almost all customers compared to South East Queensland. The re reason why is mainly down to network costs. Obviously, as you can imagine, uh, the Ergon network covers a far larger geographic area than the Energex network does in South East Queensland. So it makes sense that you need more poles, more wires and more infrastructure to reach all of these customers. So it's more expensive. Now the government has, has introduced a uh, a policy called the Uniform Tariff Policy. It's been oper in operation for, for many years now and that is effectively where prices are set at the South East Queensland expected standing offer price. Now this is for small customers. So effectively we set our notified prices at that level and the government provides Ergon Retail with a subsidy to make up the difference between the two. So that's the difference between the higher cost of supply in regional Queensland and the lower cost of supply in South East Queensland. So the, the effect of the policy is so that small customers in regional Queensland will pay approximately the same as what they would pay if they were in South East Queensland. Now the subsidy that the government provides for this is quite significant. It's over $560 million in the next budget, or at least that's the, the forecast at this point. Now we follow a methodology when we're setting prices. 
Um, the first part of the methodology relates to the network cost. That's the N I discussed earlier. Now, for some tariffs, what we do is we use the network, the ergon network tariff structure, so the times of use and the demand charge charges from the ergon network charges adjusted down to the southeast Queensland cost level. So that way, people are facing the actual uh, network pricing signals that ergon distribution is sending through, but they're still paying a price level that's approximately the same as southeast Queensland. So we go through that for tariffs 12A, 14, 22A and 24. So those tariffs are based on the ergon network charges, but those network charges are adjusted down so that they're at the southeast Queensland or NHX cost levels. Now other residential and small business tariffs, such as tariff 11 uh, for residential customers and tariff 20, those tariffs are calculated using the Energex network tariff. They're flat tariffs, so they don't have a, a, a price, uh, a tariff structure, so to speak. They are just a simple fixed charge and a, a flat charge for all the, the energy that you use. Now, large customer tariffs are, are based on the Ergon East zone in transmission region one. Now, just to explain what that means, um, Ergon has different tariffs uh, depending on where you are in the network. So obviously their network covers a very large area and there are differences in how much it costs to supply a customer in various different parts of their network. Now, the, what, what the tariffs that we use to set large customer retail tariffs are those from the east zone in transmission region one. Now that's on the coast. That is where the majority of large customers are. It's also the lowest cost area of the Ergon network. Now, that's the, that's the, the network component or the N from the, that we discussed before. Now, for the retail costs, uh, we look at, we have had the wholesale energy costs forecast by our consultants, Asil Allen. Now, they use um, a market-based approach that works off the, the prices for contracts in the market. Uh, that's the same methodology we've been using for several years now. And um, that, uh, we'll talk a bit more about the energy costs uh, in the next slide, about uh, what they've predicted for, for energy costs. Um, the thing to note, though, is that though the costs that they've forecast at this point were based on uh, data up until late November and we will be updating those wholesale energy costs with data to the end of the March quarter. Um, the March quarter doesn't end for another, another week or so. So uh, once that data is in, then there'll be the, the cost for the final determination will be calculated based on that. Now for general retail costs, so these are the costs for running uh, call centers, billing systems, um, etc. What we've done is we've maintained uh, the fixed components from last year. Uh, we've just adjusted those for inflation. So in real terms, uh, the aim is to keep them the same. And the variable um, allocators, they've been kept at the same rates as 2016-17. So the overall aim is to try and keep retail costs at uh, essentially uh, the same level as last year. Now, there are two types of uh, market of offers in the market. There are market offers and there are standing offers. Now, the difference between the two is that standing offers are more tightly regulated and have more favourable terms and conditions. Um, market offers, you, you may have heard, you can get uh, pay on time discounts and things like that. Um, but of course, if you don't pay your bill on time, then you may end up paying more. You are, there are also additional fees and charges associated with those. Now, when we estimated retail costs last year, the benchmark we used was the lowest cost, pro, the lowest cost offers, which were generally market offers. Um, but obviously, the minister has specified that we should be setting uh, prices under the uniform tariff policy at the standing offer level. So to, to account for the difference between those market offers and the standing offers, we've, uh, we will adjust by 5%. Um, now, we have actually looked at the market at the moment. The, the uh, South East Queensland market was deregulated quite recently. And at, at the time of making the draft determination, the actual 
difference between average market offers and standing offers was around about 7.4%. So it's a bit higher than what we've allowed for here. Uh, but we think it's early days in a deregulated market. Um, that may not be indicative of long term what the gap is going to be. So we've decided to, for the draft determination to maintain that at last year's level, which was 5%. Now for large customers where there is some competition um, in Ergon's East Zone 1, uh, there is almost 50% of customers on market offers now. Um, we've maintained a headroom allowance at 5%. Uh, that's to account for competition. Uh, and that's the same as in previous years. Now moving on to energy costs, now this is fairly topical, I'm sure most of you have seen a, a bit of coverage of this in the papers recently. Um, ASIL have forecast that wholesale energy costs are forecast to rise. Um, this is mainly because demand for electricity has increased, while the level of supply has stayed roughly the same. Um, also feeding into that is the uh, gas, we use gas-fired generation to, to um, fill in the peaks um, of electricity demand and obviously gas prices have increased due to the LNG, so the, the cost of running those plants has increased. Now demand has increased um, for, to a large extent because of liquefied natural gas or LNG production for export. Um, a lot of that is actually in the gas fields themselves, so they, uh, when the gas is extracted from the ground they compress it before putting it through the pipelines which run to the, uh, to the export facilities and that uses a lot of electricity. So there's been an increase in that to, which has gone in line with the increase in LNG production. In addition, there's been an increase in the peakiness of small customer loads. Now, if you bear with me for a second, peakiness uh, is essentially referring to the fact that the shape of the curve or the, the amount of electricity being demanded at different times of day has changed. During the daytime, when there's a lot of solar generation, that we've, we're seeing fewer and fewer uh, kilowatts being drawn through the network simply because that's being displaced by solar. So people are using their own solar generation or solar is being used locally. So uh, electricity is not being drawn through the network as much. However, at night when there's no solar generating, the amount of electricity being demanded has increased. So during the day you have a trough where the electricity demand or that uh, generators need to supply has decreased. And then at night, the amount of electricity that is being demanded over the network has increased. Now the difference between sort of those peaks and troughs makes it more expensive for retailers to hedge, uh, mainly because we need to use more gas-fired power stations to fill in the gap between those two, and they're becoming more expensive to use. There's been limited investment in new generators um, in recent times. Now, you may have heard that there's, um, there's a, a lot of solar projects and things like that that are being announced. Those are announced and they are in the process of being built, but it generally takes a good two or three years at least for a project to go from the commencement of construction to actually generating. So while they are in the pipeline, so to speak, we're not actually expecting them to be generating electricity during the 2017-18 uh, tariff year. Um, a smaller effect that is coming through, sort of rip, having a bit of a ripple effect across the NEM, is the closure of Hazelwood Power Station. Now that's a power station in Victoria, um, so you might think why is that affecting everything in Queensland? Uh, the reason why is because that power station is very large, it's around about 25% of Victoria's electricity supply. So that's a, a, a large amount of electricity not to, uh, to no longer be available in Victoria. So that changes how much electricity Victoria exports and imports from other states. So it has a bit of a ripple effect across the whole national electricity market. In addition, uh, ASIL have forecast that renewable energy target costs are, are due to increase. Um, that's based on, because the late, under the latest forecasts, uh, there'll be a shortage of certificates in 2018. Um, again, that, that, that sort of links back to what I was discussing about uh, the investment in new generators. There was a pause in construction for new renewable um, generation while there was a review of the renewable energy target a couple of years ago. So a lot of projects were on hold while the the, uh, the policy was finalised. Um, 
these projects have now started construction again, but again, they're not expected to generate enough certificates in 2018 to actually fulfill the short, the, the anticipated shortfall. Now down to the cost drivers, so overall we're seeing a fairly small increase compared to previous years, so that's uh, $37. Um, you can see here the two major things that are driving it are the network costs, which is in red here. So you can see that the network costs have dropped compared to last year. Um, the energy costs have increased, so they're, op they're, they're cancelling each other out to a large extent. Um, at this point. And this is for a typical customer. Now, it'll vary according to what type of business you're operating, um, you know, depending on how much electricity you use, um, the impact will be different for you. And we'll get to that on the next slide. Now, this slide shows um, a range of usages um, from sort of zero kilowatts up to 30,000 kilowatts. Obviously, there's a wide uh, distribution of different businesses out there that use different amounts of electricity. So this is just trying to give you a bit of an idea of where, what the impacts might be for you. So if you're at the lower end um, of, the, of the scale, um, so that's sort of in the bottom 25% of customers, then uh, you're looking at a change of a, of a drop of 0.3 of a percent, so a slight decrease. As I said before, at the so the 50th percentile, so the sort of the the middle customer, you're looking about 1.5 percent. Further up to the towards the top end, so where we're, where you're you're looking at uh, people with consumption of 75 percent, uh, more than 75 percent of other customers. Um, you're looking at an increase about 2.4%, so a bit more than the typical, but it's, it's less compared to recent years. Now, high voltage tariffs. Now, for, for those of you that are on tariffs 47 and 48, there's around about 65 um, businesses out there that are on these tariffs. Those two tariffs were based on a high voltage network tariff that Ergon Energy um, has currently got in place but they will, be they will be discontinuing that from the 1st of July. So that means we no longer have a network tariff that we can use to create a retail tariff 47 and 48. Fortunately, there are some alternative tariffs out there that Ergon has in place that we can, that we can base retail tariffs on, and we have introduced those. These are the 51, 52, and 52 um, tariffs. Now, which were the, those tariffs are suited for different types of customers. We'll get on to how you, can, you might be able to figure out which is the best tariff for you in a minute. Now, these tariffs feature capacity and demand charges, um, as well as an excess reactive power charge, which sounds quite complex. Uh, essentially, it's down to what, uh, what your power factor is. So that relates to how quickly uh, you use electricity, so how much you're demanding, and where, when you have a what's called a poor power factor, um, the network has to provide more capacity in order to fulfill uh, the electricity needs that you have, and that's where the reactive power charge comes in. Now, the best people to talk to about these uh, these different types of charges are Ergon Retail, and if you contact us uh, via our website, then we have a, a specific contact for for those customers to. Um, have a chat with them and model exactly what the situation is for your business. Obviously, with these types of businesses, we're talking about mines, we're talking about foundries, talking about you know water treatment plants, we're talking about very big and very diverse businesses. So, while we'd love to help you out and say a typical uh, impact is going to be this, it's rather difficult because everyone is so everyone is so different in the way that they use energy. Now, we did get Ergon Retail to model the bill impacts for customers who are currently on tariff 47 and 48, and what the, what the impact would be on their bill if they move to one of these new retail tariffs. Now, the good news is that for the majority of premises, um, the impact on their bills was 10% or less. There's quite a number of customers who are actually better off on the new tariffs. Um, now, some of the, some of the, the premises were getting impacted up to 50%. Now, a number of, of premises can reduce the impact that Ergon's showing here by renegotiating their authorised demand. At the moment, at the network level, 
there is a certain amount of demand that the network has set aside effectively for the, the businesses of these customers. Now, in some cases, that capacity was more than double what the businesses were actually using. So, under these new types of tariffs, you will be paying charges in line with these authorised demands. So that's the capacity charge. So, in many cases, you may be able to renegotiate that down lower, and so the impact on your bills may be even less than what Ergon has come out here. So, the best people to talk to are Ergon Retail. As I said, if you if you drop us a line via the contact form on our website, uh, we can provide you with the right contacts to who can sit down and go through your specific uh, business, how you're using electricity, and uh, and work out what the impacts are going to be and how you can you can best um, transition to the new tariffs. Now, with the with the the impacts that Ergon has modelled. In general, we usually give a, about a two-year transition period um, for that to, as a, an opportunity for customers to figure out how best to approach moving to the new tariffs. However, we're aware of the fact that these are very large in large businesses. There might be some significant investments that need to be made uh, in order to to uh, optimise your operations for the new tariffs, and it might take a bit of time just to to get your head around what the tariffs mean and how you can best um, you can best benefit from these. So we're, propo we're proposing to introduce a five-year transitional period for tariffs 47 and 48 for existing customers. Now that doesn't mean you have to stay on them. I mean if you are better off on the new tariffs then you can move whenever you like. But we're keeping them open for a five-year period to give everyone sufficient time to have a look at the new tariffs and figure out what the best way is for you to transition to what are the new tariffs that Ergon has out now. Now for the transitional and obsolete tariffs, now these are legacy tariffs that have been around for quite a few years now. Um, these are tariff 20 large, 21, 22 small and large, 37, 62, 65 and 66. Um, and for the draft determination, we uh, we propose to maintain transitional arrangements and the transi transition periods. So that means that these tariffs will be uh, will remain in effect until 2020. Uh, we also are proposing to adjust all transitional tariffs in line with the changes in equivalent standard business tariffs, and apply escalation factors to limit the charges under these tariffs from falling further below cost in dollar terms. This is consistent with what we've done in previous years. Now, as the increases in standard business tariffs have been relatively low this year, you'll notice that the changes are low compared to previous years. So for the irrigation tariffs, you're looking at 1.7 to 1.9%, and that ranges up to sort of 2.3 to 2.9, or 5.2 for tariff 48. Now, the next steps, um, we would love to hear submissions from everyone. Um, they are due by the 3rd of April 2017. Uh, you can see the link on the website, that, on the uh, slide there, for where you can get to the online submission form. Um, we're happy to get all submissions from interested people. Uh, we would like to take lots of different opinions on board. Um, so, once, that, that, once the 3rd of April rolls around, we will then consider all the submissions that we receive. Uh, we will then update all the draft estimates that we have for uh, the, we'll have updated network tariffs, updated wholesale energy costs and renewable energy target data, and also uh, retail data. Um, all of those will be updated, and then our final determination is to be released by the 31st of May 2017. And that's pretty common to uh, each year, that's the 31st of May. And these tariffs will apply from the 1st of July 2017. Okay, so that's uh, that's the presentation for today. So over to you guys for any questions. Thank you very much, Adam. Um, 
We haven't had any questions come through immediately, um, but what I'd like to do is certainly um, remind everyone um, that there's a great opportunity there to provide feedback through the submission uh, process, which Adam just went through. Um, again, if you wanted to send through any questions, please do so with the pop-up box, which is just in front of you. Um, we might just take a moment just to see if anyone was interested in, in touching base. If not, um, please remember that we will be sending um, a copy of today's presentation uh, through to your email inbox um, along with the recording of the webinar. Um, I just wanted to also um, highlight that if anyone has any questions um, that they don't think of immediately but certainly would like to touch base with um, QCA, uh, you can do so through the website. I'll just give you the uh, website address now. So it's www.qca.org.au slash contact dash us. So you'll be able to actually jump online and um, uh, get through to someone who'll be able to respond to your question immediately. So we do have a question come through, Adam. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, this has come through just now, it says here, is the regional market in Queensland open to competition? In Toowoomba, we have no alternative to Ergon. Thanks for your question. Um, the, the market is open to competition. However, the, the uniform, as we discussed before, the uniform tariff policy means that effectively retailers supplying customers in some regional areas do so at a loss. Now, the, the government provides a subsidy to Ergon Retail to make up the difference. Um, yeah, to make up the difference. Um, so, for small customers, um, other retailers can't access that subsidy. So, it means that retailers are theoretically free to make offers in the area, but they would lose money on the deal. Um, for large customers, uh, there is competition um, for large customers in the Ergon area. Um, as I mentioned before, we've got almost 50% uh, of customers in East Zone 1 that are on market contracts now. So uh, there is some for large customers, but for small customers, due to the subsidy uh, arrangements, um, generally there isn't very much effective competition. Okay, we have another question come through. Um, and this question is, is an off-grid customer able to access government subsidy? Um, okay, uh, that's not really something that the QCA uh, has control over. I'm not sure which subsidies in particular you're talking about, but if it's the uniform tariff policy, um, someone who is off-grid will not receive that subsidy um, simply because the subsidy comes as part of the electricity supply. So, um, yeah, the, an the answer would be no for the uniform tariff policy. I'm not sure about other uh, subsidies that may be around for off-grid customers. Thank you, Adam. Okay, we do have another question. So with regards to T51, is the power factor calculated on a monthly basis to determine excess KVAR charges, or is it at the point of max VA demand only? Now, I believe the answer is monthly, but that is something you really should have a chat to Ergon about. Um, they're the experts on, the, on these things. Uh, so I think the, the best bet is to, if you jump on our website and uh, um, contact us via there, we can give you contact details of the person who is the expert in that area and can and run you through all the questions you have on the Tariff 51 tariffs. Uh, we do have another question come through, Adam, um, and I think we do have a little bit of time to answer this one. Now, are there any plans for large volume user competitors to enter Cairns region? Um, by large volume competitors, I think uh, referring here to uh, large customer um, the, the large customer area. Um, yet there are certainly some um, retailers in 
uh, operating are in and around cans for large customers. Um, it can depend though on the type of, uh, of large customer as to whether or not um, the customers will save money or not. Um, it really depends. In, in some cases, especially if we're talking about transition, customers on transitional tariffs, uh, they can be better off on a transitional tariff than a market offer. So uh, yes, there, there, are, there are retailers operating up there, but um, it can depend on the customer as to whether or not they're better off on a market offer or on notified prices. Thanks, Adam. I think we've got time for one more question. Um, now, this question is, since we are restricted uh, in any choice we make as Ergon Energy users on Cape York Peninsula, what are you doing to reduce and subsidise costs to our region? Thanks. Yeah. Um, that's considered by the UTP. So effectively, the cost of supplying uh, yourself uh, up north would be far higher. Would be far higher in terms of what the retailer has to pay. Um, so effectively, what the government does is puts in place uh, the uniform tariff policy, which says, uh, which effectively sets your prices at the southeast Queensland level. Um, now that subsidy can be quite significant. So that's effectively. The uniform tariff policy is uh, is how um, your costs are being determined. Thanks again there. Okay, I think we actually have uh, run out of time for questions. So once again, everyone, if you do want to send um, any burning questions through, um, please do jump on the website. That address again is www.qca.org.au forward slash contact dash us. Um, otherwise, you can just go to qca.org.au and just follow the prompts from there. Um, now, uh, on behalf of CCIQ, I really did want to thank our guest presenter, Adam Liddy, today from QCA. And to everyone who joined us, thank you again. Um, you will be getting copies, as I, I said before, uh, of this recording, as well as our presentation from Adam um, in your inbox on Friday. Um, if there's anything else, please don't hesitate to contact uh, me direct. You can email uh, me. My name is Karen Miller. I'm at CCIQ. Uh, my email address is kmiller, so M-I-L-L-E at cciq.com.au and I'd be happy to um, help out where I can or forward any questions or concerns um, straight through. Um, and again, listen, we thank everyone for coming on board and we hope you have a great afternoon.